Wait, are we recording? <laughs> <laughs> That's perfect. Yeah. Live from Stack Studios. We're back with another new episode. Lots to talk about this week. Including the Virginia crisis. Is it a crisis or is it just stupid? It's both. It's very stupid. Guess where our special guest this week is, Ryan? Ah, uh, does it rhyme with Mamorin Kamormick? It does. It's Cameron McCormick. Oh, man. Director, actor, writer. We're going to do an interview with him later in the show here. Yep. Yep, 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 yep. But uh, let's do some announcements. How's that? Yeah. All right. What do we have to announce? Um, so we are the Tap Podcast with Patrick and Ryan. Yep, I'm Patrick. I'm Ryan. Also, I'm the talent, and Ryan's the engineer. I'm the face. <laughs> the face. The face. Uh, check us out on social media. We've got Facebook. Uh, yeah. We've got uh, Instagram. We've got Twitter. Twitter, YouTube, and... Email. Email. We have email. We have email. Have you ever had email before? How archaic. <laughs> Uh, let's see. Uh, you know, you could find us on Patreon. Yeah. Forward slash the tap. That's right. Uh, Patreon.com forward slash the tap. Yeah. We need your support. Um, and we've got a cookout coming up. Don't forget about that. Man, September 16th. Are you pumped? Yeah. It's about a little less than a month away. I'm really excited for it. I think we've got some uh, good numbers of people coming already. Man, we have to buy some meats. <laughs> yeah, we should start doing that, like, today. I, I was shopping the other day, and I thought, I should just start buying meat. Oh, just yeah. Just random buying, like, a box of meat. <laughs> <laughs> All right, um, so did we uh, get any responses from last week? Um. Any emails, any Instagrams, any tweets? I didn't get any tweets or emails about that. Uh, I spoke to Claire, mm -hmm. our guest from last week. Yes, she, old she wants Bear. to come back anytime. Yeah, I know she does. <laughs> she couldn't get enough of me. Yeah, I think she, I think there was a connection there, a rainbow connection. Yeah, there was uh, some kind of higher connection there. Rainbow connection. I'm feeling so much better this week, dude. Yeah. Last week I was about like 85 percent. I'm flying high at 96 this week. That's great. That's, it's up there. That it's is good. an 11 percent increase. <laughs> yeah, y'all. All right. So those are our announcements. Do we have anything else to announce? Um, I'm still married. That's good. Yep. Well, I mean, I suppose if that's what you want, that's good. Yeah. Well, I mean, we almost got divorced last week. Yeah? No. Nah. She almost got a fat lip, though. <laughs> <laughs> da -da 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 -da. All right. So. Are you ready for your offensive word of the week? Yeah. Why don't you go ahead and tell us what it is? This is such an old word. Mm -hmm. It's archaic. This word should be forgotten. What is it? Nazi. It should be forgotten. Just because of the crap that's going on in Virginia. There's a lot of stuff going on down there. Man, I just don't get it. Like, I don't understand what this alt-right is. Uh, Neo-Nazis. Okay. So what was so great about the Nazis that we have to bring it back? Nothing. There was, well... No, there was nothing great about the Nazis. Yeah, I can't really honestly think of one positive thing. Mm-mm. No, but it's, it's just a bad situation. Yep. Um, and I think it's a situation that they don't even fully understand themselves. No. I think they're just ignorant, and they have uh, this idea that they're some kind of idea of perfection. One of the saddest things I saw was um, a picture that had resurfaced of a little kid... Um, donned in full Ku Klux Klan oh. uh, and it was at a rally that was being protected by police and this kid was like standing next to and engaging with a black officer oh man I bet and that, that, that guy had to protect that little kid oh. so that's like the fine line that we walk we have to protect these freedoms of speech to a point, because oh, there ideas. is this idea of um, 
this paradox of tolerance where if you are completely tolerant of everything, eventually all tolerance will go away. You have to be intolerant of to- intolerance. Well, I think when it just becomes poisonous. Like that, it is now. That it should just be eliminated. When it's come to this breaking point. Yeah. Where I, I a just, woman is dead. Yeah, horrible. Now, was she killed by the car that ru- that slammed through the crowd? I, yeah, that's my understanding. Okay. I saw a picture of that car going through, and you could see, like, a guy doing, like, a, a flip mm-hmm. from being hit. I saw that picture. And then, like, there was shoes on the ground. Some dude got knocked out of his shoes. That is crazy. That's bad. Yeah, that was just, oh, I don't, we don't approve. Not at all. The TAP podcast does not condone neo-Nazis or the alt-right. And if any neo-Nazis want to come on, you're not welcome. No, because nothing you have, nothing you to, have say. to say yeah. is worth my time. Yep. I would rather not have any neo-Nazi listeners and fans. Yeah, than, if you're a neo-Nazi famous. and a fan of this show, please forget just about kill us. yourself. Yeah, I'd rather just stay nobody than be famous because of that. You know, I'd rather that they just sort of understand that we all have to live in this moment in time together, and it doesn't do any good for anybody to think the way that they do. Yeah. So just... It's hard to change the way that you think, because, you know, you can't change who you are as a person at your core, but you should try, at least, if you're that sort of terrible person. I guess... My thought is they don't really have a reason to hate other groups of people. Like I have no reason to hate black people Mm -mm. um, or Jewish people or Asian people. It doesn't make any sense. Any people. I could see like if there was some, something that like they were doing, like they were coming after me or my family. Right, as an entire race. Like an invasive species. <laughs> like from outer space. If black people were from outer space invading us, oh, yeah, we I'd have a take problem. over. But we're all related. Mm-hmm. At some point, every single person on this, fa- on this planet can trace its ancestry back to common ancestors. Mm-hmm. So you're just hating yourself. Yep. So that's all we're going to say about it. Fuck Nazis. Fuck the alt-right. Don't care. Uh, Spread love, not hate. Well, I fucking hate Trump. Yeah, I I do too, but, you know, I'm not going to go hit him with a car. No, I'm (laughs) I'm not. I'm just going to, my opinion is he's a piece of garbage. A human piece of garbage. I I can't believe he doesn't come out and immediately say, this is ridiculous. What are you people doing? Stop. This is not what we do. Nope. Instead, he's feeling the fire. Yep. Moving on to our next segment, which would be, we don't have anything to eat. No, we're dieting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Let's, okay. That's our segment today for eating. Yeah. Let's talk about a diet. Let's do a paleo diet. No, that's garbage. Is that's it? such a stupid diet. What is it? It doesn't work. It's a caveman diet. Let's do a caveman diet. We're no. cavemen. I, I live in a house. <sighs> Not a cave. I would live in a cave. You would live in a cave? Yeah, I don't see why not. I saw this baller cave in, like, Vietnam. This farmer found this, like, hole in the wall. Farmersonly.com. Dot com. It looked like a pretty big hole. (laughs) But it's like this five-kilometer cave that people are going into. It's got a rainforest in it. What? Yeah, it's fucking crazy, dude. Rainforest cafe? Uh, Have you ever been to a rainforest cafe? No. Super overpriced. Really? (laughs) You set that up like it was the best thing in the world, and then, nope. Uh, Well, when you're paying like $15 for some chicken strips, (laughs) that's ridiculous. It's crazy expensive. Uh, It's like you're eating in a rainforest, though, with animatronic animals and plastic jungle wear. Oh, cool. Giant spiders crawling on the back of your head. Oh, what what kind of diet would you do? How about a keto? Ketogenics? What's, what's that? I don't know. It's weird <laughs> I've heard. The diet that I have done 
Well, and you know, diets are. It's about the you know how much discipline do you have to zero change? Yeah, <laughs> I, it, that's what it is. Is you just have to change the way you eat if you want to be a healthier person. So, um, and I, I did for about five months, and I've done better since then. But it was actually it's a nutritarian diet where you basically just eat fruits and vegetables and nuts and beans. Yeah, and you lose a considerable amount of weight. And if you can maintain that lifestyle where that's all you eat, that's it's a pretty healthy lifestyle. But uh, I, like, I I can't. Yeah, I like doing a protein rich diet where it's like all protein, no sugars, no carbs. That's a decent one, but you also need those vegetables. Nah, <laughs> fuck them. What if we did a? Uh, you know what makes me mad? Huh. And people who get on their soapbox about we can't eat animals. They weren't put here to feed us. Yeah, they were. Literally were. What were they put here for? What were we put here for? Who gives we're, a shit? We're carnivores. We like to eat meat. We yeah. have teeth. Yeah. You know, there I listen to a lot of Joe Rogan podcasts because uh-huh. we're buddies. And yeah. he's really he's mentioned a lot of studies that are showing that plants actually have more of a consciousness than what we believe that there's certain types of plants that actually work together to get the most nutrients out of the soil um stuff like that they just come together more Mm -hmm. there's more of a consciousness than what we believe so if there's a more of an intelligence to like say corn that you know everything everything we eat has corn in it now basically basically yeah a lot of stuff has corn or most corn. of the things you drink yeah so what if like we're killing trillions and trillions of corn a year and they're <laughs> slowly screaming every day <laughs> but because we won't we don't want to eat you know a bunny rabbit i've never had rabbit it's delicious i uh, that's what i hear and i'd like to maybe this uh you know small game season Sure. I'll sit or out there and we could just go to a, like a like a market and buy some rabbit. Why? Cuz it's easier. So, okay. But <laughs> I think it's kind of silly that maybe we honestly don't know that these plants do, does have a, a more of a consciousness. What if they are actually intelligent? To like say on the level of, you know, like a small animal, but because we don't necessarily see it firsthand, like if you look at a corn growing, it just looks at like a plant. Mm -hmm. If you look at a baby rabbit, you think, oh, that's cute. I want to pet it. Right. Nobody wants to pet corn. You just want to eat it. Oh, don't say nobody. There's seven and a half billion people alive. Yeah. There's some pretty sick fetishes out there. (laughs) Cornholes. <laughs> no, anyway. I get what you're saying though. Like, there there could be consciousness to different living beings. Sure. Different types of consciousness, I suppose, because Absolutely. you know, corn can't get up and move; it's rooted in the ground. But a rabbit can run away from a predator. Yeah. Fuck corn. <laughs> <laughs> Man, corn's delicious. You get some of that, soak it in some salt water, and then oh, grill it. Barbecue. Oh. Mm. Yeah, uh, Joe was talking about, you know, a lot of these vegans won't eat any kind of meat or, you know, meat products Mm -hmm. or they won't wear leather, but there's, he's saying that there's more consciousness or intelligence in some plants than what are in like oysters or mussels. Mm -hmm. So you should actually eat those because those are like a super rich in protein and vitamins and stuff. Mm Mm-hmm. They're delicious, by the way. No, they're not. Oh my god! Oh, I've never had them because I'm afraid they'll kill me. <laughs> I, I also bought, they probably taste like garbage. I bought a can of oysters the oh other day. God, oh, what is wrong just with on you? Some crackers. Mm, mm. Ugh, yummy. Oh, hey, that's something we we can talk about for the eating segment too. Is just like weird snacks that you like. Oh, I eat sardines all the time. I know there's one that's gonna make Noah cringe. Oh, what? I love taking a whole bag of popcorn putting that in a big bowl 
after it's popped. Yeah. Kielbasa sausage. What? And. <laughs> what? Yeah, kielbasa sausage. <laughs> and then a block of cheese. Huh? I'll just eat that. The whole thing. Why? Oh, How man. did you ever come up with that? necessity wait was it your dad was walking down the hall with a kielbasa sausage and Shut you were up. walking down the hall with popcorn and you bumped into each other hey you got kielbasa sausage in my popcorn <laughs> you got popcorn in my kielbasa sausage no it was just i don't know it's i think it's the different tastes and textures yeah that sounds weird because popcorn is sort of like airy and crunchy, crunchy. and the kielbasa is like meaty and it's hard. still it's kind of crunchy <laughs> You know, you gotta break. Yeah, you gotta break through that skin. <laughs> That's so gross. <laughs> and then the cheese is just smooth. Oh, do you melt the cheese on top of it, or no? Is it just I just like block of cheese. Just, just take oh. bites off the block of cheese like a oh, like fucking a caveman. Yeah. Uh, I had an ex girlfriend that used to make popcorn, and she would put mini marshmallows in it, mm -hmm. and M and M's. And nuts. Oh, that's good. That's like a trail mix, though. Yeah, it was like she called it pixie poop. <laughs> <laughs> Who was that? Her name was Sarah. Oh yeah. Yeah, she was fat. <laughs> All of your ex girlfriends are fat. That's not true. Tell me, that's untrue. Okay, who's not fat? Who's not fat? Shelly. She's not your ex girlfriend. She's your <laughs> current wife. <laughs> uh I dated a girl named Shannon. She was pretty skinny. Dated. I don't know. Like, I've had skinny girlfriends. I've chubby girlfriends. I've had fat girlfriends. I I don't know. I don't discriminate. <laughs> it's all good in the dark. Yeah, they all look like walking pussies. Whoa, aggressive. <laughs> and now for a quick break from the show. Hey listeners, do you have a subscription to YouTube, Hulu, or other similar services? What if we told you that for less than the other guys, you could support the TAP Podcast? That's right. Head over to patreon.com forward slash the TAP. We have plans starting as low as $1 a month. We also have plans for just a few more bucks that come with some great perks, including shoutouts on the show and more. That address again is patreon, P-A-T-R-E-O-N.com forward slash the TAP. Hey listeners, are you a business owner or a content creator looking to expand your market? Come advertise with The Tap. We have ad space available for any budget. Whether it's a one-time ad or a weekly ad, we have you covered. Drop us a line at talkingtap at gmail.com for more information. We hope to hear from you soon. And now, back to the show. Awesome, we're back with Cameron McCormick. Welcome Hello. to the show. What up? <laughs> Not much. This is your first podcast, eh? Yes, it is. Awesome. Uh, we met how many years ago? Oh, man. It goes back a ways. Was it? It's got to be close to 10. Is it really 10? N man. Nine? Could be. Something like that. Yeah, we worked at Arby's together. Yeah. That was sweet. <laughs> Arby Land. <laughs> what was your, uh, who was your favorite employee at Arby? Oh, my favorite employee. Or wow. manager or... What did you ever work with Bobby? Yeah, no, I know Bobby, Bobby Griffin. Yeah, yeah Bobby, Bobby. We're uh, we've worked three, four jobs together now. <laughs> just okay. like follow each other around. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> I just worked with him at Firehouse not that long ago, so it's kind of oh. funny. He doesn't work there anymore. Uh, no, no, he, he took him? a promotion. <laughs> I should have. <laughs> no, I I, tra I actually trained him how to work there, and then so he could become the GM. And then he trained me to become a manager. Oh. So it was kind of funny. And then he went to a different store, and so I'm the GM of that firehouse, and now he's a general manager of a Wendy's. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. Serious. Big time. I love Wendy's. <laughs> but the reason why we have you here is you're an actor, writer, director. Yep. Everything. Triple threat. I try. <laughs> so we'll start with the obvious. How did you get into acting? Um, when I was, uh, like doing church plays growing up, I kind of just liked it. And then once I got a little older, I remember watching movies and I could like tell when people weren't very good actors. And I was like, 
yeah, I could do better than that. <laughs> that sounds super arrogant. Um, but after that, uh, it's a lot harder than it looks. <laughs> but after that, um, I had a friend who uh, we took media class together in high school. And then we started making stupid little short films and stuff like that. And then from there, he went to a film school. So he cast me in some of his roles over there. And from there, I met people over there who then cast me in other stuff. And it just kind of branched out. And so now I just like that's that's my go-to now <laughs> that's awesome yeah it seems like you like acting yeah i mean you've been in a few things yeah definitely it's a lot of fun uh very challenging because sometimes i mean you gotta play someone who's not me <laughs> so <laughs> like, i had to play like dramatic roles and i'm just not a dramatic person at all <laughs> right so it's kind of it's, it's fun it's a challenge but it's also it's pretty cool seeing how a film set is ran all the stuff that goes into it is pretty crazy yeah. Now you actually have representation too. You're like you have an agent. <clears throat> yep, I got. A, I have an agent uh, in Chicago. Um, uh, BMG. It's a BMG Talent Agency. They have uh, branches in uh, LA, Chicago, Atlanta, Orlando, maybe New York. So, so it's pretty cool that if I want to move, like you know, they can yeah. represent me almost anywhere. It's a pretty big deal. Yeah. Yeah, that's serious. We don't have an agent yet. No, <laughs> you'll get there. Hey, I can put in. <laughs> yeah. I'll put in a good word. Do it. See if they uh, they want to take on some podcasters. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Let's see. Yeah, we'll go tit for tat here. You go ahead. So, when did you start decide to start directing? Um, I uh, directing was actually never my thing. Um, until I. Uh, the film incentives in Michigan left so they were supposed to be here and like making a whole bunch of stuff and um, so directing was never my thing but I, I enjoyed writing I like coming up with like the creative story you know um, that I can kind of make my own and uh, so I was writing stuff just to write it um, and then um, I couldn't find a lot of acting work so I decided to make my own movie so that I could act in it that's a good idea. That's why yes. we're doing a podcast. Yeah, yeah. See, no exactly. one would have us on. <laughs> <laughs> Got to do it yourself sometimes. Exactly. Now, what was like the biggest film you've been in so far? Um, the biggest film I've had. Uh, I've been an extra in some movies that were pretty big. Like, okay, not not huge. Um, there's one called End of the Tour, which I was an extra in. Um, that stars Jason Segel and Jesse Eisenberg. Um, I'm just in the background hanging out <laughs> sweet yeah uh you I, were an extra in a 50 cent movie too weren't you yeah i was in a, i was an extra in two 50 cent movies oh, yeah we we beautiful. had some conversations like <laughs> yeah he told me i need to get an airplane yeah. really yeah yeah he told uh it was me that me him and this producer in like a, a tent where they were, we were like trying to stay warm because it was kind of cold out and uh uh, the producer was talking to him and he's like, Hey, uh, you know, Curtis, you got to call him Curtis on the, on the film set. Cause he's not 50 cent right there. He, he's someone different. So, uh, so he's <laughs> like, Hey Curtis, like, you know, I live in San Francisco. My girl just moved to Los Angeles. That's a six hour drive. I don't, I don't know what to do. Like, what, what do you think? <clears throat> 50 cent Curtis Jackson goes, Hey man, he's like, you got, you got a plane. And he's like, no, no, I don't have a plane. Why would I have a plane? <laughs> And he's like, dude, you got to get yourself a plane, man. He's like, think about it. He's like, after a long day of work, you got to you gotta get on a plane and, and, and or you got to drive six hours. You ain't going to be able to perform. And I was like, whoa, okay. And then uh, he's like, but if you get a plane, you're there in an hour and you're good to go. And then I, at that point, I looked at him. I was like, I was in a long distance relationship. He's like, how far? I was like, three hours. He's like, you got a, you got a plane? <laughs> no, I don't have a plane. That seems like, to be his uh, solution for everything. Yeah, he just told get me, a plane. He told me I got to get a plane. It was, it's a three-hour drive. I'm not going to get a plane. <laughs> yeah. It's not that bad. <laughs> well, when you have 50-cent money, I guess right? take a plane to the grocery store. <laughs> That's a fantastic idea. Or a helicopter. Um, but other than, other than <laughs> extra work, I have been in a couple. Well, one called As I Saw Her. It was actually like a, a romantic drama um it's about this guy who is taking photographs on like a subway and well like well, train cars i don't i don't even know what they're called people movers i don't know anyway uh he's he's <laughs> on one of those i don't know the technical name for it but he's uh <clears throat> he's just taking pictures of scenery and stuff and he, he looks over and sees this girl and he's like dang she's a babe and uh so he kind of takes a picture of her a little creepy but um and then uh he uh 
he took the picture of her and he like he uploaded it into his computer and he's looking he's like dang like i gotta find this girl so he goes back to look for her and like the whole time he's trying to find her so and uh that got picked top 15 out of 129,000 submissions for a yeah it was a worldwide competition um it was a 48 hour film festival which means we have 48 hours to make the script shoot it edit it add all the sound to it put music behind it in like 48 hours Dang. yeah it's it's a lot of work um but yeah so there was uh over 129,000 submissions from uh, over or from 133 different countries and so so we got top 15 which was f- freaking rad <laughs> yeah. yeah and they played it uh they played our short film at the director's guild of america in hollywood mm-hmm. um which is where like steven spielberg would like premiere his movies and yeah. stuff so it, it was pre- it was pretty rad we got to go there and there was like a red carpet and stuff and like okay. seeing our film on this huge screen with like a bunch of other people it was pretty it was a sweet experience that is awesome yeah i man. think i saw pictures on your facebook yeah of your red carpet stuff yep i just i just uh added one yesterday i think okay. so yeah it was i mean it was super awesome it was such a cool experience have you had any formal training no oh, wow. <laughs> no i just kind of uh my training is me seeing how bad i sucked at the beginning and being like all right i need to not do that next time <laughs> that's what we do yeah <laughs> you suck pretty bad but yeah i've never had any formal training i would like to you know at some point take some acting classes just to get more of the like the details and everything you know i'm sure i'm missing some things that could make me better so i'm always looking for reasons or in ways to make me better than what i am so sure yeah yeah you go on a lot of additions to like chicago don't you yeah yeah i geez lately i've been going so so much it's uh i had an audition what is it sunday i had an audition friday in chicago for ragu <laughs> for a ragu commercial <laughs> really <laughs> yeah that would be awesome yeah. though yeah so I, like i go there it's it's uh it sucks that i have to drive there because a lot of the times the auditions are like you walk in and you're there for like five minutes then i gotta drive three hours back home so, so it's like you know what curtis would say <laughs> i gotta get a plane man. <laughs> plane, man. <laughs> <laughs> just hop across that lake Let's see. Uh, I just watched Lucky for the first time since it came out, I think. Okay. Hilarious. Thank you. It was so funny. <laughs> Good. Uh, Ryan hasn't watched it. I didn't watch it. I'm sorry. I will. <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I'm a terrible host. He's he's the talent. That's what yeah. he says. <laughs> well, I, I wasn't sure how it would... I feel like I have a real dry, weird sense of humor, so when i wrote it like to me i'm thinking like this is hilarious it was super fun but then a lot of the time i'm like oh man like is this people are just gonna like crickets like are they gonna be crickets <laughs> like no. when that felix dude walks into the cell and he sits down he's got that big dopey look on his face i lost it i was like dude that could, that could be me <laughs> yeah it was, it was uh that was that was a lot of fun it took a lot of money to make that <laughs> did i <laughs> yeah i think i i spent somewhere between three and five grand to make it wow Jeez. yeah it's only 15 minutes long <laughs> it's great though. I loved it. <laughs> thank you i i've been working on trying to write like a, a sequel really yeah i also i originally wrote it as a feature so it was 93 pages long okay and I wanted to make it a feature because there's so much I could do with all them characters. Oh yeah. Uh, but like I spent three to five grand on a 15 minute movie. There's no way I can do that for an hour and a half. Sure, <laughs> It'd be yeah. ridiculous. No, that'd be fun. You could flesh out so much. Like the Delilah character. Oh yeah. She seems like every ex girlfriend I've ever had. Exactly. And here's here's the funny part is how how I made them, uh, or how I cast them. Okay. The for you cuz you don't really know the story there's a sure. the there's this girlfriend who i have who's or who my character has who's just like a jerk <laughs> like and, <laughs> and she's got dark hair okay. and and i really wanted uh the dark the hair to represent good and evil okay but the funny part is is uh, a little bit later i meet this other girl um who has blonde hair but their char- their personalities are totally flip-flopped in real life oh, so really? like the girl with the dark hair uh, her name's Taylor Alexa Frank. She's like the biggest sweetheart you'll ever meet. She's like super kind and very nice. And uh, Jordan Burgess, who's the other one, she's also, you know, she's nice, but she's like more edgy and more feisty. So <laughs> it, was, it was just kind of funny how, like, we were talking on the set how like if it was real life, they would be 
switched. That's funny. <laughs> so it was kind of, it was funny. I thought they both did a really good job, though, so I can't complain about anything. Yeah, and that was shot entirely in West Michigan, right? Uh, yep, I shot in uh, Muskegon at Pine Park. Yep. I shot at the Allegan County Historical Society in Allegan. Um, it used to actually be a jail, which hmm. was, uh, wow. yeah, now they turned it into like a museum. So you can actually go and kind of see it. And then there's somebody who will give you the history of all this stuff. So that was kind of cool. Um, we did like a tour before we like checked it out. Okay. Um, then we shot at, shoot, I can't remember the place, but we shot in Holland, Michigan. And then we shot at my uh, buddy's house in Grand Rapids. Okay. So it was all over the place. Yeah, when I was watching it, I saw Pine Park come up. On, it's the Pine Park Fruitport Machine or whatever. Mm -hmm. And I said, oh, that's funny. I got beat up there one time when I was a kid. <laughs> <laughs> and then your character kind of gets beat up there. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, oh, nice. <laughs> <laughs> They hit you real, hit you real deep. Yeah, they it, it cut me deep. They got me. So yeah, no, I liked it. the The music was phenomenal. Like the sound engineering was okay. so good. Thank you. Yeah, I um, there was the main song that I wanted, and I was listening to it, and I I was like, this is perfect. So I thought that was perfect. And then um, my buddy Colin Nichols, he did all the all the sound design. Because what they have to do is they have to cut out all of the sound besides the audio or besides the voices. And then they have to edit in. So, like, footsteps, they're not actually there. Yeah. Like, it's, it's all like, it's all pre-recorded yep. stuff. And so that's, like, time-consuming, but I thought he did a really good job of that, too. So. Yeah, it sounded great. That's good, man. See, Ryan, when you do your research... You can, it pays off. You touch. You personal <laughs> connection. <laughs> no, I'm... He'll watch it. I soon. will. I promise. <laughs> and especially if it's funny. Cause yeah. I love it is super comedy. Funny. Well, good. I'm glad you thought it was funny. I premiered at uh, the Cinema Carousel in Muskegon. Yep. Um, not on a big screen. They have like a party room, mm -hmm. and they let me uh, like rent it out. And I, you know, it was a decent enough size screen. And so I set up all the chairs, and I did. I think I rented it out for like two hours, but um, but we watched it, and like there are parts that I think are funny, you know, that are coming up, and I have no idea how these people are gonna react. And so I'm just like waiting, and I'm like, it was actually super nerve wracking because I'm like, I worked yeah, hard on this. Tense. <laughs> like I worked hard on this. What if like nobody laughs at the parts that are supposed to be funny? <laughs> but everybody was super into it. You know, there was a lot of laughs when they were supposed to be, and uh, I had a lot of compliments afterwards. Like people really enjoyed it, so I was super stoked about that. Yeah, Good. I'm excited that you're gonna do a sequel. Yeah, it's a. Uh, the premise is going to be um, Marty. Do you remember Marty? Uh, his best yeah, friend. Yeah, his best friend. Yeah. Yeah. Um, pretty much it just delves into their friendship a little more. Oh, that would be cool. And so it, they kind of go on their own little adventure because oh, okay. something unlucky happens to Lucky. And, oh, yeah. Yeah. Because that's the story is Lucky is really unlucky. <laughs> okay. That, that's, yeah. That's it. <laughs> Sounds good. You would have got that if you watched it. I know. <laughs> I know. I'm sorry. I keep talking about it. No, no, no. That's good. No, you're supposed to. We brought <laughs> yeah. you on here to hype this stuff. I love it. And I, I like purposely watch it like three times just because <laughs> he's better. Just because I knew he wasn't going to. <laughs> <laughs> so, how about this? How's what's your technique? What's your approach towards acting? How do you get in that headspace? Um, it really depends on the role. Um, there are some roles that are like comedic and they're more me so i don't really have to get into um i don't really have to get into and stay in character through the whole film set um some people like heath ledger with the uh, the dark knight as the joker it's uh i can't even think of what it's called method acting yeah like they're they're method actors they're and i can be depending on the role mm -hmm. um but uh like a lot of the times like if i play like somebody who's like nervous like i don't really need to get in like it just depends on the role because there's a, another one that i did that was like all really sad so i had to like i don't know how i i don't know i don't exactly know but i kind of just like read the script and you just kind of have to feel the character and you have to think you know that's me right now you know i'm i'm him he's me like that's who i am i'm not cameron right now i'm someone else so right. it's it's kind of it's kind of difficult, especially when um, there's a lot of people on a film set. And so, you know, it's kind of hard to to concentrate outside of it. But it, the weird part is, is like once I'm on the, on the screen and everyone's around kind of watching me, you can pretty much just blank out everybody, which is crazy. Because it's like, how do you do that in a room full of 30 people? Yeah, but, I don't think I could do it. But yeah, it's, it's pretty crazy. Like, 
once you get into it, you don't even realize, you know, that all this other stuff is going on, which is really cool because that's when I feel I'm my most successful. This is when you're just in it. When I'm just in it and I'm like feeling it, you know, I got the characters, I know the backstory, you know, and then you can kind of put it together. And and the director, you know, whoever's directing, that makes a big difference too because you guys have to be able to collaborate and the director could see it one way and I could see it another way and then you got to try to find like a mixed... You know, you have to find a good middle ground. A good middle ground where you both are happy with it, and you both can make it the best it can be. Cool, man. Yeah. Thank you. You know who are good method actors? Who? Porn stars. <laughs> <laughs> I bet you they have to be super focused. <laughs> Maybe. I was just thinking that the whole time you were talking about that. <laughs> method acting. Sorry, I'm thinking about porn. <laughs> <laughs> now, I. Uh, you moved out to LA for a time, didn't you? I did, yes. Yeah, how'd you like that? Uh, it was awesome. I loved it. I was real poor though, real fast. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I was out there like about, about three months. <laughs> uh, moving out there was a was a very split second decision, I mm-hmm. guess you could say. Like I agreed to it, and then I had one month to just get everything together, and. Um, I think I went out there with like six hundred dollars. Like I didn't, I didn't prepare very well. Um, <laughs> but I went out there, uh, and three of my buddies were supposed to um, kind of have a place set up, and we were staying at a friend's house, and so they were supposed to have a place set up. And the the game plan was I was gonna, you know, move in with them, and then I wasn't taking my car, so I was going to find a job around our apartment so that I could, you know, work and continually bring in money so that I could live out there, and. Um, we never found a place. We were out there for three months, so we ended up living in a hotel. Oh my god! Yeah, with uh, it, was, it was so janky. My friend got solicited by some of the ladies in the nighttime. He was eighteen, <laughs> I think, and uh, the hotel. There was one part where there was a, a helicopter surrounding our building with like its spotlight just on the windows around the building. Jeez. We're like, oh. All right, they took that. They took that uh, hotel down. Doesn't it's not there anymore. <laughs> I think, <laughs> think that was for the best. Did you go on a lot of um, auditions when you were out there? I didn't go on any. What? Yeah, which is a real bummer. I would have thought that would have been like your focus. It, that was, but um, we were a good, we were a good fifty minutes away from LA where all my oh, auditions okay. would, and I didn't have a car. So, so the game plan was I was to gonna live in a place where I could always take the bus. Right. You know, we were so far away that it was impossible and so like you know i was trying to you know try to find some place around the area where i could uh you know do whatever i could to get work and stay out there but it never happened so i was like super poor after three months and i was like hey mom (laughs) i'll (laughs) pay you back if you buy me a plane a plane ticket (laughs) Uh, there's no uh no shame in that do you think you would move back uh we are planning to move out there in 2018 Ooh. Yep. Up here. Yep. My uh, my wife and I are gonna. We were shooting for this coming January actually, um, but I uh, I made some financial decisions <laughs> that uh, my I, I bought I bought a camera. It was about a thousand dollar camera. Um, it's a good camera, and um, I'm trying to get good with it so that I can work and uh, get into photography more. And if I can make you know the money back from that then we'll be set up sure. a little better um but now i just gotta get good with it real quick i have a couple of friends who do like wedding photography and they said that i can like join them and like if i get good they, they might be able to hire me in so i'm hoping that that kind of thing will happen which will actually help us in the long run to yeah. be able to go out there mm-hmm. um but yeah, January was the goal, but now it's strictly based off of if I get any, you know, roles that I auditioned for in Chicago and if anything with photography kind of kicks up. Yeah, cool. big ragu money coming in. <laughs> yeah, that'd be sweet. <laughs> no joke, that would be sweet. They, they keep casting me as like a, or they keep giving me roles. You got to be like a, a 35-year-old, and I'm like, hey. I'm 27 and I look like I'm 23. <laughs> like, like, oh, well, you, 30 to 35, you got this. So, I, like, the the last one I went to for Ragu, I, I played a father of two. And so I'm like, all right, well, let's yeah, give it a shot. Work. Yeah, so, I mean, you never know if, if I do something different that they like. So, yeah. Yeah. Anything could take off. Yep. Um, what are your thoughts on creating content in, like, Michigan? 
Uh, what do you mean? Well, because you were talking, you mentioned the, there was like what, big tax credits? Oh yeah, there was a tax incentive. So right. um, it would it would draw people in because there'd be incentives for, for people to come to Michigan to film it because then it can save them money. Um, I think, I, <laughs> I don't want to get political. I, I, I don't mind uh, Governor Snyder. But I wish that he would have kept that there. I don't know if it's because I'm a filmmaker, but I also believe that like I've seen film sets. I know how many jobs they bring. Like I know, Tons. you know, all that kind of stuff. It's like crazy. Those are like um, Transformers. You know, just shot here not that long ago. Uh, Batman vs Superman I th was shot there. Yep, in Detroit. They were gonna shoot the Avengers over here. So like we had all these people who wanted to come in, and then they nixed it. And so I was, I'm super bummed now because like. That pretty much means that I have to move, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, um, to Chicago, Atlanta, or L.A., like one of those places. Um, but I really wish that they would have they would have kept them, you know, because I feel like as far as the economy goes, bringing in jobs, like it makes people can see how awesome Michigan is, you know, from a film aspect. So that's like really cool. Like Grand Haven, I think it's such a sweet city. Yeah. Why is nothing ever being filmed there? You know what I mean? Uh, American Pie too. There's the opening scene on the beach. Okay. They do that big pullback, and you can see the kites flying. Oh, okay. I'm in that scene. Really? Yep. That's awesome. Nah, not really. You can't really see me. What? Look, look at that. In, like a thousand feet away. We got another actor in the house. Yeah, hey, look at you. <laughs> Talent. Ah, oh, man. I didn't watch that movie either. I'm sorry. He's never even seen Home Alone. <laughs> Home Alone? I've never seen Home Alone. <laughs> or how about Jurassic Park? Jurassic Park either. Come on. I had a weird childhood. Okay. <laughs> have you seen Star Wars? Yeah, I have seen Star Wars. Lord of the Rings? The new yep. Star Wars. Okay, those are canceling out a little bit. The new Star Wars is super good. I haven't yeah. seen any of those. You Have you? Oh, yeah. Yeah, Man, he's Star a big, big Star Wars guy. Oh, gotcha. Did you see Rogue One? Yes. You like it? Uh, 90% of it. Okay. So. Yeah, I liked it a lot. There were some issues. I liked the, I liked the Force Awakens better than Rogue One. I think I did, too. Yeah. But... I'm super stoked for the next one. Super stoked. So it comes out. It comes out in December, right? December, yep. Sweet. All right. <laughs> That's um, quick. Seems so quick. September first is Force Friday. You guys don't know what Force Friday. I don't. Do I don't know what that is. <laughs> well, if you're a big pop toy collector oh like I am, <laughs> we do a segment every week called Pop Talk. Okay. I love it. Where I buy these collectible pop figures. I don't know if you've ever seen them. They're pretty awesome. Okay, well, he's shaking his head now. <laughs> uh, Force Friday, Star Wars, Lucasfilm, Disney, they do this big thing uh, Friday at midnight on Force Friday. They release all the new toys for the new movie. Oh, okay. So, like, Toys R Us will stay open at midnight, Target. They'll have all these exclusive toys. Man, I've, been, I've always been a pretty huge Star Wars fan. I can't believe I've never heard of that. September 1st. Like, Force I used Friday. to run around with a stick and beat up my friend because I was Obi-Wan, you know? Hell yeah. There's a new Obi-Wan movie coming out. I know, I saw that. They just announced it. I wonder really? if they're going to yeah. uh, stick with... Uh, Ewan McGregor? Ewan McGregor, he yeah. He wants to do it. He's getting a little older, but I bet he could, do right. it. I bet he could rock it out. That's all right. Dye his beard. Right. I got to dye my beard. Yeah, you do. What's up? <laughs> Time at Star Wars. Love it. Uh, what's your dream role? My you dream know, role? Your dream role. Oh man, that's tough because there's so many things I want to do. All right, let me put. Let, let's do this. Okay. You walk into uh, like a, an audition, and they say, "Okay, we're gonna give you. We're doing this big budget movie. We're doing like a super Batman versus Superman. Okay. But good. <laughs> I didn't like Batman versus Superman. It was so bad. Batman and Superman are my two least favorite superheroes of all time. I like Batman, but. And I really like the Man of Steel movie. The Man of, Man of Steel was pretty decent. That's so good. I watch it all the time. <laughs> <laughs> all right. But they say, okay, we want to do this big superhero movie with you. Or we're going to do this TV show centered around your character. Oh, man. Or we're going to give you like 75 grand and you can go shoot a short indie movie. What would you do? Oh, Let's see. The TV show would be more consistent, and if it became big enough, you know, a lot of TV actors, you know. Yeah, you get syndication. So there's the that. Check. But, I mean, if you were to tell me that I could be one of the Avengers, like, I'm going to be an Avenger. Which one? 
all of them. All of them. <laughs> Super <laughs> Each and every one of them. Uh, oh, man. Which one? I like the Vision a lot. The Vision's sweet. Oh, yeah. Um, and Star-Lord. Okay. I was I just love thinking Star -Lord. You, you are like Chris Pratt Jr. Really? That's what I think. <laughs> I'll take it. <laughs> uh, let's see, what Avenger would you be, Ryan? Hulk. I don't know. That but was... can you control it? No. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Although, I could go Iron Man and be a billionaire and then use... Oh, never mind. We're talking money. Never mind. I was like, <laughs> if I was real life Tony Stark, I could make all of my own movies. <laughs> yeah. You ever see those things where there's like, there's 7,000 billionaires on the planet and not one of them has created Batman yet? Yeah. <laughs> it's like, no one really would do that. Why? Why would you want to put your life at risk? Because your parents died. That's stupid. Your parents <laughs> did die. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I, got, I got another question for you. All right. Uh, you must have had some influences for acting. Like, if you look up to somebody, who would it be? Oh, man. Uh, it could be more than one, too. Well, like, when I was younger, it was definitely Jim Carrey. Okay. I was told I looked like Jim Carrey also. I see. And my friends make fun of me and tell me I look like Bill Nye the Science Guy. I know that one's I fake. I see that too. No, no. If you get were a bow tie here. here right now, I'd be like, I want to say one thing. You look a little like Paul Rudd. I've gotten that one. Okay. Who else? Have I, I mean, I've gotten a ridiculous amount of people. You know, um, you got one of those faces. Yeah, I got. I, I walked into like auditions and I'm like, all these people look exactly like me. I'm like, I, I got nothing here. <laughs> Justin Bartha, you know who that is? Mm -mm. Uh, National Treasure. Have you seen those movies? Yeah, Nicolas okay. Nicolas Cage's sidekick. Gotcha. He's also in The Hangover. Yep. Yep, I got him, Jim Carrey. I've gotten Johnny Knoxville. Yeah, um, I see that. That's see? Fun. See? That's so <laughs> I got like a mix of everybody's <laughs> face. I've been told I look like uh, Zach Galifianakis. Okay. Yeah, I can see that. And I think the guy's name is not Sean Bean. Do you watch Game of Thrones? Yes. Do you remember the first season, uh, King Robert? King Robert Baratheon. Yeah. Yes, what is his name? I can't remember. I can't think of his name. I can see that one he a little bit. He had a show on CBS called Still Standing. Yes, I remember. Is he the dad? Yeah. Oh, I remember that. Yeah. When I when I used to have to shave, okay. I looked like him. <laughs> you looked gotcha. so weird without a beard. I know. It's horrible. I'll never <laughs> shave again. I did do this specifically for my ragu audition. <laughs> I oh, had God. to look older. <laughs> It's funny, I've gotten some like auditions for like Chicago PD, Chicago Med, Chicago Fire, and like three of them were like, all right, you're the main thug in this group of thugs. And I'm like, have you seen my face? <laughs> like, <laughs> it's a what? baby face. Like, I'm baby sorry. Thug. Yeah, they're like, you're the, you're, the, you're the corner man. I'm like, oh. I go anyway, but I'm oh, like, I... I'm, I'm not going to get this. <laughs> like, I just know it. I would go on like every audition. Yeah, that I yeah, like, I go on every one that I can, even if the, even if I'm like, huh. What's the weirdest or worst audition you've been to? Um, besides <laughs> this podcast, yeah, besides, besides this, this podcast, one. <laughs> uh, one one of them was for the uh, for uh, like the main thug. I had to go. I think it was for Chicago PD. And so I like to to go. I, I had to like try to dress the part. <laughs> you know, I don't. I don't know. I don't know. It was interesting, and I had all my lines memorized exactly how I wanted to say them. And then I got there, and for some reason, I lost everything. Oh, like I had no. three hours, you know, and I practiced it, and I practiced it, and I'm like, all right, I got this down. This is how I'm gonna say it, you know. And three hours is a long time, so I I just get it down pat. Like the three hour drive is kind of a blessing. At the same time, it's kind of a curse because like. You get the, it's like a three hour drive, so you're not like fully like rejuvenated to you know get into it, which kind of can be a downfall. But I, I got all my my lines memorized, and then I just like froze, and I was like, ah, uh, I pulled out my phone, and I was reading it, and then I said the wrong word, and then uh, they're like, they're like. Oh, okay, thank you. I was like, can I do it one more time? And I tried it again, and it was equally as bad. So oh, that, no. that was one of the ones that I was really, really upset about because I just drove six hours, you know, round trip, six, seven hours. Yeah, to. That'd be a bummer. Yeah. Uh, the ragu one I just went to was a little interesting because it was me, this lady who was supposed to be my wife, and these two kids. And, um, and I, uh, 
pretty much the the woman's like cooking her food or whatever and then i'm supposed to walk up and i'm like oh do you need any help with anything and they're like she's like uh yeah if you want to take this to the table that'd be awesome so i'm like all right sweet thanks you know i, I bring it to the table and i set the bowl down and then like uh our kids run in and like we kind of sit down and we're just like having a conversation like just it's pretty much just uh ad-libbing everything and it's all improv so i'm like all right cool and so the first time i walk up to this this girl i'm like hey i'm like uh I'm like, hey, it smells awesome, you know, just kind of improv it. And she's like, can you take that bowl for me? And I'm like, yeah, uh-huh. <laughs> and so, like, I, I grab the bowl, and I'm like, all right. And so, so I walk, and then um, and then the next time, I was like, all right, like, that didn't work out, <laughs> like, at all how it was supposed to. And then the next time, uh, I walk up, and I'm like, oh, man, you know, that smells amazing. And then uh, I'm like, you need, you need any help with anything? And she goes, she goes, no, I think I'm fine. <laughs> I'm like, uh oh. <laughs> all right well if you need anything just let me know and so like just not it's like it's supposed to be like this family we just were not on the same page so oh, no connecting. it was a little That's it was a little cool. rough and then the kids were supposed to have a conversation when they walked in and they didn't they didn't say anything and so it was like a weird silence and then the next time they came in uh the guy already the person doing the casting was like you guys got to make sure you're talking like argue or something you're like brother and sister you know do your thing and so uh they walk in and then they're sat there and like don't say anything the guy's like you guys gotta talk and <laughs> the kid is like i'm so hungry <laughs> i'm just like oh, kids are the worst yeah it was it was interesting <laughs> man do you like call your agent though and be like oh hey well, when when is this career gonna take off like i need more gigs um what happens is she has um she has uh the Sorry, they have the website, and then when people, what I think they do is I think they just look through the headshots, and they're like, all right, I want that person to audition, I want that person, I want that person. So they tell her, and she emails me. The, the thing that sucks is a lot of the times they're like, all right, you need to be here tomorrow at noon. Like, I have a full-time job. Mm -hmm. But in the, the main reason I'm still a GM is because I can be like, hey, guys, I'm not coming in tomorrow. <laughs> like, if I didn't have that... Uh, you wouldn't have a job. I would I would find something else. Um, yeah. But uh, like uh, they'll they'll call me. I've had quite a few actually. Um, I think it's the fall. I think the fall is like, or maybe it's the spring. Is like pilot season they call it, mm -hmm. and that's when there's a lot of casting for short films and films and stuff like that. Um, lately I've been getting like oh commercials and and modeling stuff, which is real weird because I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> I'm just like all right, They're like <laughs> smile. I'm like. Oh, blue steel. All right. And <laughs> <laughs> I would do like awkward smiles all the time. Right. And so like, <laughs> and so uh, it's funny because when you're modeling, you have to like act like you think that you're the hottest person ever, sure. <laughs> which is really weird because I don't at all. So I'm like, I'm like, all right, you know, you got this. You're hot, bro. <laughs> like, <laughs> but I still, I mean, I gotta, I gotta learn to audition modeling. Um, sorry, that got off topic, but, um, no, you're fine. Uh, so they, they send me roles kind of as much as I can, but there are a couple different websites that I can go through and I can find stuff and, um, they want your representation to cast you and send your stuff to them. So rather than me, they, they have these websites, um, where you can submit yourself, but it costs you like a dollar every submission Jeez. which is you know this is a lot well it's a lot if you you know put yourself in a whole bunch of stuff but my representation kind of takes on that so if i find something on a couple of these websites i can send it to my agent and be like hey can you get me a, an audition for these and then she'll be like all right i'll see what i can do you know and then she can right. submit me to other things cool. oh that's cool but yeah, yeah I, usually they they do everything for me which is kind of sweet yeah that's their job yeah. <laughs> well, if, if I make money, they make money. So. Right. Yeah. I guess that would be a good incentive. Yeah. Sweet. Oh, we're so glad you came out today. Yeah. Is there uh, anything else that you want to say to the many fans that we have? The dozen? The dozen fans? The dozen? <laughs> the, we call them the dirty dozen? <laughs> yeah. Uh, I got, I got nothing. Well, where follow, can they... follow your dreams. There you <laughs> go. Speak from the heart. Right That's... there. It was all heart right there. <laughs> where can our listeners find you? Um, you can, uh, search Facebook. I'm working on getting my own profile or my own, we uh, website. Um, but I'm very bad at doing that. Have you tried I don't, space? I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, all right, I'm going to spend like $75 for this for the whole year. 
And then I don't touch it because I don't know what I'm doing. I don't want to think about coding. Uh, But I do have a Facebook page. Um, It's Cameron McCormick dash acting page is what it's called. Or Facebook.com slash Cameron Michael McCormick, which is the longest name ever. But (laughs) Cameron McCormick was taken. (laughs) Have you tried Twitter? I do have a Twitter. I haven't used it in like two years, though. Ryan hates Twitter. I don't get it. Right. It's like (laughs) Facebook, except more pointless right exactly although i mean it's cool for for famous people i suppose you know sure. they can talk to their fans that way i've talked to a couple famous people who'd you talk to uh burt kreischer i don't know who that is he's a comedian okay who else have i talked to i had uh somebody somebody big liked one of my tweets or something it was stupid i think it was like a fan of burt kreischer's or whatever but another somewhat famous person but that's it. That's it. I uh, wrote to T Swizzle one time. Taylor Swift. I yeah, Swizzle. I know who T Swizzle is. Yeah. Oh, good. yeah. So I was like, drills on her. I went to I went to see her live in Detroit. Oh really? She was super good. Yeah. I I, I, <laughs> I tweeted at her and I was like, hey, if you need an actor for a music video, <laughs> she didn't respond. I don't know why. <laughs> Kesha never responds to me. What on earth, Kesha? <laughs> Get your stuff together. That's what I said. <laughs> Uh, did you hear about Taylor Swift's lawsuit? Yes, I did. She won. Did she really? Yep, a dollar. Yeah, I, I heard that. She yep. just wanted to make her statement. Yep, she did. Did like, you I hear about a... that? I read about it. Yeah, I read about it. I was like, oh. Guy was a pervert. Grabbed her bare ass. Under her skirt? <laughs> Under her skirt. Wow. And the, the picture, you see like him on uh, her left, Taylor in the middle, and then the guy's girlfriend on the other side. Oh, my gosh. And I hate people. Mm-hmm. And she's like, yeah, he didn't grab my arm. He didn't grab my elbow. He grabbed my bare ass. <laughs> In court. Jeez. It was brutal. But she won a dollar. Got that dollar. Good she looked her. at me. She looked at me out of the uh, oh. however many thousands of screaming fans. And she, she looked she was right like, at you. She gave me a wink. She that, winked at me. I, it was right at me there. I mean, it could have been me or anybody else no, in it my was, it, was, it was me it was definitely it was me. at you but there were other people around you who probably got just a little bit of it <laughs> nah, was mostly Do I have any? but definitely for you <laughs> i think i have one twitter follower who's something his name's jason bloom um he uh his production company is bloom house they sounds familiar mm-hmm. it should they've done uh, Sinister, Insidious, like all those, yeah, Paranormal one. Activities, Annabelle, okay. Okay, yeah. The Purge, like he's done all those. And I, I got a chance to, uh, we went and saw Sinister. Have you seen Sinister? Yeah. It's I don't like my, scary it's movies. It's one of my favorite scary movies. But uh, scary we went and movies. saw it, when I lived in California, we went and saw it um, three weeks before it came out. And they did a, uh, a Q&A with the director, Scott Derrickson, and um, the producer, Jason Bloom. So, I mean, it was, it was kind of cool. Um, I was actually... After that, uh, Scott Derrickson, after that, he was, you know, making his way to getting uh, getting bigger. And so, like, um, I added him on Facebook, and we were Facebook friends for a while, which is cool. Um, so I messaged him. Oh, I think he responded to me, actually. And I think he pretty – I just said Sinister was awesome, and I think, he, I think he just responded and thanked me. I was like, oh, sweet. But now he's doing bigger movies. He just directed Doctor Strange. Oh, okay. Yeah, wow. so he had to change his, uh, his Facebook to a, like uh, – person's page rather than just like a regular page a, no a regular page but like famous people have their own pages or whatever mm-hmm. um but yeah so he changed it to that and then jason bloom the director or the t- producer followed me on twitter which i was like oh that's kind of cool <laughs> no that's like crazy when someone famous follows you on twitter right because that burt kreischer followed me and um he's well he's this big comedian he just had a special on showtime called the machine okay and I, I started listening to his podcast or whatever, and I tweeted at him something about making a, uh, oh, I was making a bottle opener. And I was like, oh, I work in a machine shop. If you want, I could you know make something up. And he followed me and was like DMing me. Nothing ever came of it, but. That's awesome. I ended up sending him our video that we shot for our cookout that's coming up on the 16th. <laughs> it was so good. He hasn't responded yet, so. It was too good. It was too good. That's, that's he's He's like, man. I think he's intimidated. I'm below that. That's got to be it. I mean, he had some famous TV shows, but now it's... Nothing like our cookout. No. Have you watched our cookout video yet? I have not. Oh, man. Man. (laughs) It's, uh... I didn't do my research before coming on here, man. See? Should have. Learn your lesson. I'm off the hook now, right? (laughs) Yeah, we canceled (laughs) out. It all cancels out. 
Uh, but September 16th, we're having a cookout at Nystrom Road Park. You're invited. Yeah. Bring whoever you want. What is it for? Just just for our podcast listeners. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Just yeah. a, you know, a little meet and greet. Okay. Yeah. M-E-A-T. You have to remind me on Facebook because I'm very bad at remembering sure. everything. Wait, what day is it? September 16th. That's I'm a Saturday. I'm in Florida. Ah. Man, we were hoping to have one famous person come on. But... <laughs> Not quite famous. Dang it. I'm famous in my household. Dang it. Uh, <laughs> your wife acts a little bit too, doesn't she? Uh, for the first time. She uh, she just got... Uh, <laughs> it's a funny story, actually. Uh, she's always wanted to be like... A, to like try it out, you know, but she doesn't want it to be something where something that's important to somebody else you know because if she's not good she doesn't want to ruin it but she wants to give it a shot she's just kind of like worried like you know yeah i want to try it but i don't want to screw something up for anybody else um and so uh she posted a wedding picture a couple months ago and i was helping produce this uh short film called the bride and it's a little short little horror film and um so she had her like wedding dress on and my friend messaged me who uh, who's directing it and he's like hey uh i don't want this to sound bad at all but does your wife want to be the bride? I just saw your wedding photos. I was like, <laughs> oh no. <laughs> so uh, he's like, no, he's like, I'm just saying like, like this might work out. You know, she doesn't really have any lines, but you know, right now. So her first thing, she's playing this like creepy bride and like they did her makeup and stuff like that. And she looked real creepy. Like it looks, it looks legit. Um, but that was just kind of funny how, how he said it. And was like, oh, I don't know why I didn't think about it before. You know, he wasn't thinking it like, Oh, she looks like a creepy, creepy person in your wedding photos. <laughs> That's awesome. What if her career like takes off on you? That'd be so awesome. That she said that before. She's like. I was like, dude, audition for this, like, get this role, you know, if, if yours Definitely. takes off, that's awesome, like, I would be so jealous, <laughs> I, I would, I would be, I would be jealous, but I'd be like, the, the happiness for her were over, I would sabotage jealous. it, I'd be like, you, you're gonna knock it out of the park, you're just gonna kill it, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry for cutting your face a little bit with the knife and giving you a permanent scar forever, <laughs> yeah, now you cannot really have a but that's me, I'm just a bad person. <laughs> so. but uh she's gonna be auditioning and some other stuff and I, I wrote a couple little short films that are like five minutes long uh if i can shoot them and i'll just like have her be the the lead girl in them so so sure. give it give it some shots i don't know i'm I just can. trying to do more stuff sure yeah that's all you gotta do is more stuff you put out there yeah like this podcast we put a lot out <laughs> put one out every week try to almost every week yeah almost every week every week I mean, I got what, like 440 likes on my acting page. So there you go, buddy. I, I gotta gotta bump those numbers up somehow. <laughs> I think we're almost to 100 on our. our really, Facebook that's awesome. Page. Almost. <laughs> that's sweet, though. 72 of those might be mine. <laughs> you know what's Fake actually accounts. hilarious that you just said that is I was I texted my wife and I was like I need to make. 570 more Facebook profiles. Like, exact <laughs> conversation. I said I need to make 570 more Facebook profiles with, like, different emails so I like my stuff, so I look better than what, you know. Yeah. <laughs> look more popular than what I really That's am. It. Have you thought about doing any crowdfunding for your movies and stuff? Because uh, it's I did, expensive. I, I did a Kickstarter, or Indiegogo for Lucky, yeah. and I the goal was 5000 and I raised 155 and I put 100 of it in there so like <laughs> so i was like oh, okay cool I, I put 100 at the beginning i'm like all right you know people are gonna be like hey you know yeah, it's taking you know, off. it's taking off <laughs> everyone's like ah they got a hundred dollars they're fine we're good yeah so, we started a patreon for our podcast yeah it's a it's like a crowdfunding site um they do like a monthly patron subscription type stuff okay but then we do like rewards every month for yeah, there's people. little incentives on there okay but it's something to look into. Yeah. Patreon.com. It's a good idea. Hey, we always try Indiegogo, Kickstarter, um, stuff like that. I, I've only made my first lucky. I have so much going on with, like, work and stuff and trying to, like, take time to audition, you know, that, like, when I try to write, I'm, like, burnt out. I have some good ideas that I want to do. I had a really good idea. It was... Uh, I started writing it, and I was like, dang it, this doesn't make any sense. <laughs> it was about a, a cop who... Uh, who is going to this house um and pretty much there's a girl there i can't say anything without like give it's five minutes so if i say anything else it's like yeah, giving everything away you so give it away, anyway like there's just some 
some stuff that like doesn't make sense i'm like well if he's this way then this can't be that way but if that's that way then this can't be that way so it's like so i'm, I'm struggle busting on that one but i started writing the lucky sequel um which i would like to do at some point yeah, <laughs> but, that once, awesome. but once again i mean i put a ton of money in it now i'm trying to move <laughs> so i can't spend a bunch of money on stuff so get on patreon man patreon patreon.com i'm gonna have to i'm gonna have to look into that because yeah, we're, we're getting 12 dollars a month right now yeah oh snap there you go doesn't cover the cost of the podcast so nope. i'm getting zero dollars a month but <laughs> <laughs> so, well, i mean anything would really help so yeah yeah so uh we're doing another one called between a moon rock and a hard place and it's a it's a nasa short film okay. um, one of my cool. buddies who is uh pretty into like space and nasa and stuff like that so this one's about um this girl who's like an intern she's by herself at night and then uh she accidentally spills coffee on the keyboard and like hits buttons and then the drone ends up uh someplace it's not and so now it's like the whole thing is her and this other guy who came in trying to like problem solve but how it's written is super good and it's um it's very back and forth if if it's done right with the right acting with the right directing i feel like it could kind of keep you super interested until the end oh it sounds so cool. yeah awesome well, all right well uh let's uh give you yeah whatever you, you want to tell people about lucky yeah um Man. Unless you're sick of talking about lucky then no lucky's fine lucky's lucky's my baby uh we shot lucky. it we shot it two years ago, I think, or three years ago, actually, now. Okay. Um, it was 15 minutes. Um, it's just about a guy named Lucky who has really bad luck. I wrote it. Um, I was actually going through a lot of crap in my life at the time, and I was being super down on myself. So how I wrote it is I was trying to be positive, and I was like, oh, man, like, okay, let me write all this extremely bad stuff that could happen and, like, what could come from it. And so that, that was essentially, like, what it is, is this guy named Lucky he was really unlucky, you know, and he kind of just goes through the story and you find out how unlucky he really is. <laughs> um, there's some, a uh, couple little twists at the end that I like to think, nah, kind of, not really. I don't know. It's pretty straightforward. Uh, <laughs> that but, brings it around really good though. Yeah. Um, thank you. Yeah. So, uh, it's, it's a, it's a family friendly comedy. There's no, you know, cussing. There's nothing really bad in it. I try to keep most of the things I do, uh, appropriate. Um, yeah, we don't. <laughs> it's a filthy show. It's horrible. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, you can, you can watch Lucky. It's on Facebook. Uh, I have a Lucky page that you can like, or, um, if you go to youtube.com and type in Lucky dash short film, I think you should be able to find it. Yep. Um, we can put is it all you did. That. Yep. That's, uh, well, I think you sent me a link, and I, oh, okay. I found it through that. Okay, gotcha. Because I actually or... tried to buy it on Amazon. Oh, really? I'm, like, scrolling through Amazon going, I know it's got to be on here. And I'm like, oh. Yeah. It's only it's only 15 minutes, so I want to put it into film festivals. I, I put it into one. Um, didn't get anything from it, but uh, it's it's different. It's just fun. It's not... It's my, it was the first thing I ever or, uh, directed. So I, I was expecting a train wreck, and it... Every, every I had a lot of really good help making it, so it was really awesome when it kind of came came down together. There's one shot at the very end; it it, it, uh, it focuses on a car. It's an after the credit scene. Yeah, and um, we shot everything in the summer in like four days, and then uh, we uh, we were editing it, and then once we got to the end, we realized that the last shot doesn't have anything to do with the car. It doesn't really focus on the car, and that's like the focal point of the shot. And so we actually had to wait uh, eight months to be able to film sh or finish shooting it, which really sucked. <laughs> so we had to like go back and like make sure the the lighting was uh, roughly the same, had the same location, same vehicle, and stuff like that. So that was kind of a pain. Uh, but yeah, um, you might be able to type in Cameron McCormick Lucky short film on YouTube, and I think it should be there. What uh, about uh, your IMDb page? Do you have one of those? Yes, I do. All right. Yep, it's uh I think it, it's just Cameron McCormick, but yeah, when switch. when you become a part of the union, you have to change your name. And I think there's already a SAG Screen Actors Guild lady named Cameron McCormick. Oh no. <laughs> so I'm going to have to come up with some kind of name for myself. I don't know. Kurt Cameron. <laughs> Kurt Cameron McCormick. <laughs> <laughs> I thought oh, about throwing cool. in my middle name, 
Yeah. Cameron Michael McCormick. Then they'd be like, Cameron Michael McCormick. <laughs> That's all ridiculously yeah. long. Or Cameron M. McCormick. Or just changing my name completely. Yeah, that'd be kind of... I wouldn't want to change my name. Yeah, I don't want to do that. I want to avoid doing that. <laughs> C. Michael McCormick. Like M. Night Shyamalan. Yeah, there you go. There you go. <laughs> cool. C. I'm... Knight Camelon. Camelon? Cam- I like it. I don't know. <laughs> like Camelon. That's funny. Anyway... Everyone we bring on the podcast, we like to give a little gift to. Yep. It's different for every person. Sort of personalized. Personalized. <laughs> okay. So, last week we gave um, our friend Claire a pop vinyl figure. And she really liked it because she's kind of flaky and it was like a My Little Pony thing. It was very colorful. Yeah. For you, <laughs> we, we went out and got you this nice Arby's gift card. <laughs> bring it back. Bring it right back. Back you to can, the old times, you man. You can go back to our old store. I don't remember the store number. Was it like 250 or? Was it the one on Apple? No, no. it's on uh, Henry. Henry. No, oh, Harvey. Harvey. Harvey, yeah. Okay. Whatever. I don't remember at I all. Think, uh, I think everyone's still there. <laughs> Ten years ago, probably. The, the two Steves, I think, are still there. Nope. Steve. One Steve. Steve D there? just left. Steve D. Which yeah. one was he? He was the assistant manager. Okay. Clapper was... just came into Firehouse the other day. He did? Yeah, he's still he's still there doing his thing. The clap. The clap attack. <laughs> <laughs> I think probably those were the only two. Are you still friends with Dan? Erksleyman? Yeah. Yes, I am. <laughs> he's at the one on Henry Street. Still? Sherman. I keep saying Henry. Sherman, yeah. I, th- I thought I saw him once on Henry Street. He, he was working there for a long time. Then okay. moved, moved recently. I think we're still friends on Facebook. Okay. He's a cool guy. No, oh, cool. You'd like him. You want to have him on the show too? No. <laughs> <laughs> Not even a little bit. He's a good guy. He is. He's just uh, special. <laughs> Does he still live with his friends? I, I I have no idea. I haven't talked to him in so long. <laughs> he was weird. He was a weird guy. Yeah. But yeah, we're super pumped that you came on. Yeah, we man. Really thanks for being it. on the show. Uh, we're no sorry problem. you can't come to our cookout. I know. I'm bummed. That'd be fun. Uh, you're going to have to change the day. <laughs> that's, that's, that's all. That's all that's going to happen. When we were talking about... Who's that girl we were talking about earlier? Oh, uh, this Avery Faith. Okay. She does podcasting and cosplay. Okay. Out in LA. And I would sent her our video, too. She really liked it. And we were talking back and forth on Twitter. But she's going to uh, Son of Monster Palooza that week. Okay. For some cosplay stuff. So she can't come. So you've talked... you would like... Who, who all have you done this with? Um... Let's see. We did Claire last week. And then Uh, before that, we hadn't had guests for a while. Yeah, it was... Who else have we done? Well, we had Brian Austin. Brian Austin. He's a tattoo artist. Okay. In Muskegon. Uh, My sister. Oh, yeah, your sister. Yeah. She's trying to bang me. I mean, it's... it's (laughs) She's like, nope. She's not. Nope. (laughs) Both both his sisters. It's pretty aggressive. They've both been on the show, but they're not trying to bang Patrick. A little (laughs) A little bit. Uh, there was another one before that. Why am I blanking on who else we've had on? No idea. I uh-huh. feel bad now. Oh, feel we like... had Noah on. Yeah, we did have Noah. Sorry, Noah. <laughs> our sound in- er. That's our yeah. That's our engineer. <laughs> yeah. I feel bad. I feel like I shouldn't ask this question. Oh no, he'll he'll be. <laughs> fine. Make a lot of no, people the, really sad. <laughs> the whole point of our show is to do awkward interviews. Perfect. Yep. I, you made it awkward. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> I got you. I said when I was coming, I was like, I just got to do one real awkward thing. I ask some weird questions that I'm not going to be able to answer. It's all good. <laughs> so it was one. Cool. But all right. Well, cool. Karen right. McCormick, thank you awesome. so much. Thanks for coming. Hey, no life. problem. Thanks for having me. No problem. Let's, uh, let's touch back on like the Virginia crisis and, and, yeah, but- and some of the stuff that we've seen locally in Muskegon. Have you seen this? Yeah, okay, yeah. We can wrap that around like that. Yeah. Cool. Um yeah, there's a an American flag that somebody had painted a swastika on and draped over the like an I96 I oh, yeah, pass. What the hell? That sucks. And then um at Muskegon High School, graffiti. Yeah, somebody had painted um I don't. I don't know what the word was. I think it was something like "you don't belong here." We were here first. It was or... a phrase or an offensive word. I don't know exactly yeah. what it was, but that's so dumb. Did it rhyme with Tigger? More than likely. 
because usually if you're going to go for it, they're going to go for the gold. <laughs> they're going to go hard. Yeah. Nope. It just sucks because, like, yeah, uh, I love this town. I do. Yeah, I know you do, but it's a festering garbage pit. Uh, just people need to so chill not, out. Yeah, not only was it at Muskegon High School, but Nelson Elementary School. Elementary school? An elementary school. Come on, people. Get out of the mindset. You're all crazy. You're stupid. You're going to... Who goes to Home Depot to buy tiki torches to go march? <laughs> like... <laughs> yeah. This is what this is what really set me off. I thought about that. About go ahead, though. And buying some tiki no, torches. No, 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 no. Don't do that. No, I, I, I thought about the whole, like, the process of... Like, was it one guy who went and bought all like of those? 30 of them? <laughs> or was it... Or was it like a herd of them just came in and was like, we need we need some kind of light source, guys. Glow sticks. Yeah, we're having a get-together how about, tonight. How about glow sticks? No. Those are fucking gay. <laughs> Fuck the gays. We need something aggressive. How about... Fire. Fire. Yeah. How about... Fire... How about, uh, and we don't like mosquitoes either. Yeah. Let's get some of that citronella tiki torch. Oh, my God. Dude, and then in the parking lot, there's like 60 people, and they're all filling up these tiki torches with green citronella fluid. Some old guy walks up, and he's like, hey, what are you kids doing? Having a party? Are you guys having a tiki party? <laughs> Fuck you, Jew. And there's um, there's companies that, you know, products used, like the... the t- uh, the people who make the tiki torches apologized immediately. They did? Yeah. Why? They didn't do it. Exactly. But they were like, oh, we didn't, this is not what our product is intended for. No, it's intended for backyard barbecues. Yeah. <laughs> and now every time, oh, oh man, that's going to so suck. For our cookout, we can't have tiki torches. <sighs> Fucking, we're going to get eaten up alive by mosquitoes because of the alt-right neo-Nazis. Stupid. And you want to know another way this affected me personally? How? How? Last week, I was going to go get a haircut. I was going to trim up the sides nice and tight, and then I like it a little long on top, you know, a little comb over. Pretty normal. Now I can't. Why? Because that neo Nazi. Oh, what? Yeah, that hard shaved side and then combed over. You weren't going to do that. I was, it was going to be close to that. <laughs> I was going to look pretty buff. You're going to look. And now I can't get a haircut. Thanks a lot, neo Nazis. I have to grow my hair out and be shaggy. Like you did earlier this year. Yeah, that was good a, lord. That was a shaggy mess. That was funny. So I'm getting a haircut tomorrow. Awesome, dude. Ah, I should ask if she wants for a, a sponsorship spot. Yeah, absolutely. That'd be good. Good for her. Good for me. Yeah. I'll ask her tomorrow. Yeah. Uh. It's her birthday today. Who is this person? I don't know. Should I give her a shout out without her giving us money? Yeah, I mean, you can wish her a happy birthday. Happy birthday, Alyssa. Alyssa? Yeah, I work with her. Worked with her. Is she single? No, she's married. How married? Um, Pretty married. <laughs> Does she listen to the show? I think she did at one point. Yeah, I hear that a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you guys got kind of boring. I don't know what happened. No, we're just putting out a lot of content, and people are like, I'm only on episode 10. We are putting out a lot of content. <laughs> we're. Have you seen how many hits our video has? Last I knew it was 75. I think we're over 80. Dope! <laughs> well, I've been trying to push it this week and share it a couple of times. Yeah. Do you think we should sponsor it? We could. Just do, like, the Muskegon area? Yeah. Yeah, because I don't want any weirdos from Grand Rapids coming. I'm just kidding. I want everybody from Grand <laughs> yeah, Rapids yeah, we to come. Need everyone. How, Grand gonna... Rapids is a lovely town. Okay, this is what I envision for our cookout. Okay, we're there. It's yep. well, let's say we get there at ten o'clock. We're getting stuff set up, ready. Damn. We're putting the kissing booth up. Yep. <laughs> but you have to build the kissing booth. That won't be hard. Okay, and then do it's... it out of construction paper. I don't think that'll work. As long as it doesn't rain. <laughs> if it rains. <laughs> anyway, keep going. But what if like we it gets to be like noon and we look over and there's just this herd of people walking towards the pavilion. I'm ready for it. We're gonna have to get lots of meats. Mm-hmm. Okay. Condiments. Yep. The Trojan brand kind. Yeah. <laughs> We're getting laid. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you are. 
probably not. <laughs> oh, is that is that a segment that we could do right now? Who's getting laid? No. Well, <laughs> dating with Ryan. How's dating with Ryan? <laughs> So dating with Ryan has been a bit of a touchy subject the last few weeks. Yeah. After I've been dumped. Dumped. I pour my heart. That serious. No, it wasn't that serious, but it was it was fun and she was really cool. And I I always do this. I always like go balls deep into everything. Well, maybe you shouldn't. Yeah, it's it sucks. <laughs> but, maybe uh, maybe you should just have this like I'm gonna step back and have this perspective of I'm gonna see where it goes. I, that's what, I, and that's what I was getting at with this right. one, and then it was just like, Bad. sorry, don't want to see you anymore. And I was like, ah, that sucks. Do you want to hear my take on it? Yeah, she was still married. Well, but she was separated. Separated. Is separated. Is separated. Now, from my divorce, there was no, never going to be a reconciliation. Right. But you never know. So, and especially when you're in that separated space, mm-hmm. man, I just, I wouldn't want to touch that. You know, I didn't think of it that way. Yeah. I thought of it as just trying to get to know this person. Sure. And and then seeing where things went. Yeah. And because I know that I dive into things a little too quickly. Right. In the relationship aspect. And probably from her point of view i mean she was married she's just coming out of a marriage she probably doesn't want to jump into another relationship right and get married again i mean well she had been separated for about seven months at this point well so still so i don't know some people need more time than others that's fine yeah and i like i said i i said before i completely understand sure but it doesn't make it any easier so i would man i if Oh, like I would not want to be single. This sucks, man. But if I was, like I would be just out balling. <laughs> not crying. <laughs> no, I I'm not crying, I'd but I'd be running trains. Uh, I don't know, man. I like even after I break up with someone, I still feel guilty for talking to other women. There's nothing to feel guilty about. I, I talk know. to other women all the time, I don't feel guilty. Right. And I'm married. <laughs> Maybe that's the point. Yeah, I guess I should probably start because, you know, ultimately I do want to be with someone. Well, last week I joked about starting that uh, dating thing for you. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do it. It's happening. Okay. (laughs) Do it tonight. I'm going to get you a furry. Oh, God. We're going to make you a furry costume. We're going to go to a furry convention. Those are so expensive. No, they're not. I've, I've... You've looked into it? I did some you research. Did some research, you freak. No, I think I watched a part of a documentary about it and I don't know, it was a Vice thing. It was okay. on Vice. And I watched it and some people will pay thousands of I'm dollars. Sure. I'm sure. They're good costumes. They've got little flaps that come down, your pangus comes out. It's great. It's good times. I do like that part. <laughs> it's my favorite part. <laughs> I don't know. I just I'm sure they're nice people, but I'm not in that headspace. Like, that's just a different, completely different headspace to be in. Yeah. It has to be. Because you're a fucking nut. You're in a <laughs> costume. I wouldn't you're say a nut. dropping a flap to have sex with another freak in a costume. Yeah, but it's, it's you, the, I think it's the anonymity of the, the thing. Oh, uh, yeah. But uh, what are the chances of that person in the squirrel costume being a hot chick? Mm. That she's backing up that tail to you, and you're in the wolf costume, so you're a dominant. Like, you're going to take that squirrel. That's not a real thing. There's no such thing as an alpha wolf. Did you know that? No. I think you're wrong. I'm not wrong. It's just parents. What? Yeah. There, there was a guy who did a nature study and then wrote a, a book, The Wolf. Okay. And in that book, he claimed to, from his observations... He claimed that there was an alpha wolf that everyone followed. Okay. He went back 20 years later and was observing the same thing and found that it wasn't an alpha wolf. It was just the parents and the um, pups were following it. Hmm. And then he spent 
like all of his time and money trying to get his book taken off the shelves and denounce himself. Wow, that's crazy. Yeah. I, apparently, he never heard the song Leader of the Pack. <laughs> that's about a dude in a motorcycle gang. <laughs> I think. Is motorcycle it? club, sorry. Exactly. It's not a gang. Exactly. Sorry, no, all no of you motorheads. Ugh, I follow this motorhead on Facebook. He's this big... <laughs> dude, he's this big, aggressive, like, Harley dude who mm-hmm. takes... Heroin. No. Probably <laughs> 10 selfies a day and posts it on Facebook. Oh, he's one of those giant biker dudes who carries around, like, a little toy dog or something like that. I imagine. We're gonna like, go it's a real dog, thing. but I think the classification of that small dog is a toy. No, I think it's a poodle, like a stuffed animal. <laughs> and he tells how pretty it is all day. So pretty. Put the lotion on. <laughs> You're a fucking dog. Yeah. So that was a hard left from Pop or from uh, Dating with Ryan. Yeah. I mean, I'll get back out there. All right. So what's our next segment? What can we talk about now? Are you ready? I'm always ready. Are you ready? This is your favorite. I know. Are you ready for Pop Talk? Pop Talk! Pop Talk! Mm. Yeah. All right. Are you ready for the new count? Yeah. What is it? 101. 101? You got three more? 101. We jumped up this week. What'd you get? We went out. We did a little pop hunting. Mm -hmm. We picked up a blade, Wesley Snipes blade Mm -hmm. from the movie. Which he probably doesn't see a dime of. Oh, definitely not. From the pops, I mean. Uh, We picked up... Oh, I got a green She-Hulk. Hmm. And I'm, I need the red She-Hulk. I was going to say, isn't she normally red? Nope, she's normally green, and okay. now she's also red. Now, there's this whole storyline about why the Hulks are different colors. Because there's a green Hulk, there's a red Hulk, there's a gray Hulk. Okay. <gasps> Sorry. The, I don't, the red Hulk, I don't remember the storyline. The gray Hulk was like intelligent Hulk. More of the Bruce Banner personality came through. Mm-hmm. He was called Mr. Fix-It. Um, I don't really know the, the She-Hulk stuff because I don't read that. I mean, I look at the pictures because they got boobies, but that's it. <laughs> like real for real cartoon boobies? Yeah, like they're drawn boobies. I mean... But they're not covered? Well, yeah, they're covered. It's a comic book for kids. I mean, you can't just have tits hanging out. Could. I guess. Uh, we got... A we got the blade, we got She Hulk. Oh, we got a Rafiki from the new Lion King pops. Okay. Um, we still need a Simba. 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 And we got one more. I can't remember what it was. It was either. No, you didn't. No. You had ninety eight last week. Did we? And you have one hundred one this week. That's hmm. three. Hmm. Wesley Snipes, oh, nope. Rafiki, and Simba. I think our count might or, have been off. You said you still need a Simba. Yeah, we still need a Simba. So you got the uh, Wesley Snipes. Wesley Snipes. Rafiki. She Hulk. She Hulk. Okay. I think our count was off because we're definitely at 101. We also got, I got a large Shax from Destiny, the Destiny Pops, the video game. Yep. And then oh, we got a Scooby Dumb. Huh? Yeah, the gray Scooby. He's like Scooby Dumb. Do you remember the Scooby Doo cartoon? There was Scooby Dumb, Scooby Doo. Oh, yeah. He had the red hat. Yep. Yeah. Yep. I do remember that. You got, yep. Y'all got Scrappy, right? I don't think they made a Scrappy yet. Hmm. A lot of people don't like Scrappy Doo. Yeah, he's kind of a douche. <laughs> Scrappy Doo. Put him up. So, yeah, that was our, our big pop talk. Um, I did get an email from Pop-Tart69 asking, well, th- he's like, hey, why did you guys get Claire a pop, but not Shelly? Shelly lives with all of your pops. Yeah, she literally buys all the pops, Pop-Tart. Yeah. So. So that- she has about 101 pops. Exactly. She didn't need another one. Exactly. I love that Claire opened it. I know. I'm and like- it made you so upset. I was sweating. <laughs> Like, uh, and uh, I egged it on too. I said, "Yeah, open that thing." 
<laughs> oh, man. Because I knew it would make you twitch. <sighs> I've never opened one before. That's so, like, why? I just, ne- I've never opened it. Mint in box. That's the way you go. If you guys have any questions, feel free to write in to us, uh, talkingtap at gmail.com. Tell us your pop stories. Tell us what you're looking for. Uh, if you guys are looking for certain pops, we can, you know, let's create this network and trade and, like, you know, get as many out there as we can. Yeah, tweet at us, too. Hashtag pops. Yep. Hashtag the tap. And or hashtag talking tap. Hashtag talking tap. Yeah, hashtag talking tap. And Funko, the creator of Pops, mm-hmm. just opened up a new Funko HQ. Oh my god. It is a giant store. Where did they open that? I think in LA. Okay. I feel like it's LA. Probably. Everything it, cool happens in LA. The, the pictures I saw, oh my god. I'd probably go in there. I could you could drop a grand easily yeah easily easily <laughs> on just generic pops hmm. we were looking up some pops the other day mm-hmm. and a pop that i passed on a couple of years ago uh they it's bubba fett from star wars mm-hmm. his first appearance in the star wars animated short from the 1977 star wars christmas special that only aired one time on cbs Mm -hmm. his pop figure from that appearance at the time was close to 500 (laughs) i passed on it i can't imagine why well (laughs) i messed up yeah fourteen hundred dollars what that's what it's going for right now man you could have made some money no, I could have had a fucking awesome, valuable pop on my shelf. I guess. And a hard acrylic case. You got anything else to say about pops? I need more. Send Patrick your pops. Oh, my God. I'm going to start. See, I'm really snobby when I buy my pops. I don't. They have to be mint, right? I think if I find one with like a damaged box, I could open that one. And then I could have it out and play with it. Have you ever found one with an open box or damaged box? Yeah, I just usually pass on them because... Garbage? Garbage, yeah. I mean, they're not worth anything. Here's the recap of the episode. Go. Talked about our cookout coming up. Yeah, September 16th, need some road bark. We talked about the Virginia crisis. Garbage. It's awful. Be nice to each other, everybody. Stop being Nazis. Talked about food. Love food. Love food. Man. Love to eat. We talked about our amazing pop collection. Yeah. We which, talked about pops. I forget about that all the time. Probably on purpose. We had Cameron on the show. Cameron! Nice guy. If you guys have a second, please go on iTunes. Uh, give us a five-star rating with a positive text review. Go on the Google Play Music Store. Yeah. Google Play Music. Check us out. We're there. Uh, all right. So. All right. So that's our episode. Thanks. Yeah. I've been Patrick. I've been Ryan. And this is... The Tap Podcast. All right, see you later. Bye.